Hey everyone, welcome to my first ever Q&A video. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. I'm gonna try and get through as many as I can over the duration of this video. But before I do, it is Black Friday, so just a super quick announcement to say that I have 50 coupons available for Bulletproof Guitar Player at over 60% off. So if you've been on the fence about buying my course or you haven't quite had enough money to get it, today's your chance to get it for a super discounted price. Usually it's 50%, today it's over 60%. So you can use these coupons from today up until the end of the weekend, the end of Sunday. Links for that are in the description. Okay, let's get into these questions. Starting with Andrew Denning, he asks, I watched one of your older vlogs where you covered Nervous Breakdown by Brad Paisley. Which was awesome, by the way, and you are a really fluid player when it comes to faster licks. Thank you, Andrew. My question would be, how did you develop your speed and fluidity when with your guitar playing? Thanks, great content as usual. Thank you, Andrew. So, developing speed, how do I do that? Well, first, I decide at what speed do I want to be able to play something, and I call that the target tempo. So say I have a particular lick that I've been practicing, and it's not quite there, I want it to I want to be able to play it at 160 beats per minute. That is my target tempo, 160 BPM. Then what I do is I figure out a speed that I can already play it at comfortably with no mistakes. So let's say that's 100 beats per minute. That's the speed I'm gonna start at, 100 BPM, and work my way up gradually, day by day, until I get to 160. And how I do that is I take the lick, practice it for like five, 10 minutes each day, and on the first day, I'll start at 100 beats per minute. The next day, I'll add three beats per minute onto that. So 103 beats per minute, then 106 the next day, 109 the next, 112 after that, so on and so forth until I reach 160 beats per minute. So establish your target tempo, figure out the tempo where you can play it comfortably, add on three beats per minute per day until you reach your target tempo. Eric Barrera asks, do you know recording music PC programs? Which one do you recommend? Thanks a lot, have a great day, buddy. Thank you, Eric, you have a great day too. As you can see, I am a Mac user, so I use Logic Pro X, which you cannot get on PC, unfortunately. But I do have some experience with Pro Tools, which is the industry standard, and that's probably gonna seem like a generic answer, but Pro Tools is the industry standard and you can get it on PC. So I would recommend getting that if you're able to. Mark Ward asks, Bulletproof Guitar Player is a fantastic course. It is detailed, straightforward, and no nonsense in its approach. Thanks, Mark, I appreciate that. My question would be, Ross, what do you have in mind to build upon this course? My hope would be further exploration of harmony, technique, and more real world focus on music, both creatively and in study. Cheers. Thank you for the question, Mark. So moving forward, I will be releasing a part two to Bulletproof Guitar Player, and that is going to further explore more advanced harmonic concepts for guitar. So more theory that you can actually apply to your guitar playing, it's just gonna be more advanced. So there will be more advanced, I keep saying advanced a lot. There will be more sort of exotic scales like melodic minor and harmonic minor and some modal stuff as well. There will be more advanced chord vo say that again. There will be more interesting chord voicings and yeah, things like that. So it's basically going to be a continuation on from the first course. Mika underscore productions asks, what makes a good guitar for you? Uh, a few things. Tuning stability. It's got to stay in tune. Um, it's got to inspire me to play in a certain way. So when I pick it up, I want it to be something that I don't want to put down, you know, I want it to inspire me to play in a different way. So, you know, when I pick up a Strat, I play differently than I would, well, I play slightly differently than I would when I pick up a Tele. It just inspires me to play different things. As well as that, I think playability and comfort are probably the top of the list for me. It's got to feel smooth, it's got to feel effortless to play. I don't want to feel like I'm fighting the guitar when I play it. So yeah, those are my top three, tuning stability, inspiring sound, and playability and comfort. Up next, Adonis Lahara asked quite a few questions. I'm just gonna pick one. What's your thoughts about different tunings? How does it affect the melody? Well, the only other tuning that I play in aside from standard is open E tuning, which is used by players like 
Derek Trucks and lots of other slide guys and girls. So that inspires me to phrase things differently than I would if I was playing in the same key, but in standard tuning. So yeah, playing in a different tuning, it definitely does alter your melodic playing and your chordal playing as well. Chase Down Dreams had a couple of interesting questions. One, uh, can you recommend an amp for under £300? Yes, I can. It's the Boss Katana 100 watt 1x12 combo. That's what I use for gigs these days. It's a solid state combo, but it's got lots of effects and useful features in it. And it does respond like a valve amp. I feel like when I turn it up loud, it does have quite a nice dynamic range that you get with a lot of tube amps. Although it doesn't obviously sound like exactly like a tube amp, but it's pretty close. He also asked, did you study music? When and why did you choose to be a professional musician? And how does life feel this way? Yes, I did study music. I graduated this year from Edinburgh Napier University in Scotland, where I studied for four years on a popular music degree. As for when did I choose to be a professional, a professional musician, I can't really pinpoint an exact moment but I guess just since I started playing guitar when I was 10 years old when I started doing that I was like this is what I want to do with my life I want to play guitar for a living. How does life feel this way? Uh, honestly it feels pretty good. I feel very fortunate that I was able to graduate this year and immediately sort of sustain a living as a working musician and do what I want to do with my life so at the minute things are going good I'm happy with where I'm at and hopefully it can continue. Uh, some of these questions are just a bit too hard to answer in a short Q&A video, so sorry if I avoid any of them. But Jerry, your first question there, I'm not going to bother trying to answer in this video because it would be better explained in a separate video. But your second question, what valve amp would you recommend that's not super expensive? Uh, I can answer that. I would recommend the Fender Super Champ X2. I think that's what it's called anyway, but it's basically a really small Fender 1x12 amp that's a combination of tube technology and digital modeling. And those amps are awesome. AJ Smith asks, what are some good warm up techniques? I personally like to do some left hand legato stuff to get started and get the blood flowing in my left hand and also do some alternate picking exercises as well to get both hands sort of warmed up. The left-handed exercises I got from Tom Quayle's Modern Legato 1 course, they're very, very useful. I've been using them for like two years now. And as for alternate picking, I use some exercises that are in this Creative Guitar 2 Advanced Techniques book by Guthrie Govan. There are some, some really good alternate picking exercises in there. Frank Castillo asks, what's your practice routine? Uh, that changes all the time. I start with warm-ups then do some technique stuff, then some chordal stuff, scales, improvisation. It, yeah, it's kind of hard to answer in a video like this, but it does change all the time. Um, I do have a video on practice that's waiting to be edited, which should be uploaded within the next week or so, so stay tuned for that. Top 10 guitarists according to you. Oh, that's hard. Uh, Derek Trucks, John Mayer, Matthias Azato, Guthrie Govan, Slash, Stevie Ray. Mm, uh, I'm struggling to think of any others, but those are my top seven. Seven for now, I guess. That might change. Dylan asks, what's the simplest way to run your amp through your computer? If you have an amp with a line out input or output on its back, then just take a lead from that. Go into an audio interface, plug that via USB into your laptop. Um, I use I use a Focusrite Sapphire 6, this is kind of an outdated interface, but that's the USB interface I use when recording an amp. How do you start to branch out from playing various chords and begin to play lead and solos? Well, you're going to need to learn some scales to play solos with, so maybe start with a simple one like the major scale or the minor pentatonic scale and figure out how you can apply those to various chords and uh, that does sound quite vague but it's all covered in a lot more detail in my online guitar course bulletproof guitar player so as i mentioned at the start of this video there's a special extra discounted black friday coupon available to use on that so check the link in the description for 
over 60% off. Kyle No Music says, talk about your experience in music school. Okay, well that would probably warrant another video altogether, which I'll probably do in the future. But for now, just to summarize, I was there for four years. I let, I let, I met a lot of great people, a lot of very like-minded musicians and some not so like-minded musicians, which, you know, was good to experience as well. And yeah, it was a really good place to be for me since I just finished high school and I knew I wanted to do music. I wanted to pursue a career in music. So going to music school definitely helped me get a better understanding of the industry and what you need to do, what you, the kind of person you need to be to succeed in this industry. So yeah, overall it was a positive experience, but like I said, I would probably do a more in-depth video on that in the future. Ivan asks, what's your favorite guitar? Love you. Thanks, bro. Um, out of these two, oh, it's hard to decide. I probably spend a lot more time playing this Telecaster than I do playing my Les Paul. In fact, I know I do. I play this on gigs all the time. It's just, it's got a lot better tuning stability and generally is more reliable. But I also love playing my Les Paul as well. A Sunburst Les Paul has always been my dream guitar. So I'm very lucky to own one of these. Um, it's got sentimental value because my dad helped me buy it when I was in school. Or should I say, I helped my dad buy it for me. That would be a more accurate uh, description of that event. So yeah, I've had this guitar for five years and I'm never going to give it up. Probably never get rid of this one either. I don't know. It's hard to decide. I'm getting a new guitar in a couple of weeks, so that might take over. Who knows? Mr. Bobby asks, what are some pedals you use for tone? What are your favorite descending and ascending licks to play? Uh, the answer to the last question, I mean, that changes all the time. So I'm just going to answer the first question and thank you for those questions by the way what are some pedals you use for tone um i use a fractal audio axe fx2 preamp which basically is like an amp modeler with a whole bunch of amazing quality effects in it as well so that's pretty much all i use as far as pedals go i don't have a traditional pedal board set up although i would like to get one in the future Tony M asks, any acoustic guitar playing? Nah, to be honest, I'm not really much of an acoustic player. I did have a Taylor GS Mini, but I sold that to a friend recently and I am gonna have to buy a new acoustic at some point, but I much prefer playing electric. I only really play acoustic if it's something that I have to do for a gig. What's one thing to keep in mind when playing with someone? Uh, listen to what they're playing and adapt your playing to that. Dave Dufour asks, how do you practice ear training effectively? I use a program called EarMaster Pro. You might have heard of it. It's a software program that has a bunch of great ear training exercises in it, both for rhythm and melody and harmony and all that good stuff. Alvin Sampson asks, what players have influenced your playing the most and how? Uh, slash Joe Bonamassa, John Mayer, Matthias Azato, probably. That's more a more recent one. Uh, Slash, I got a lot of my initial sort of rock clicks from when I was growing up. Joe Bonamassa, I got a lot of uh, pentatonic alternate picked runs from him. When I started listening to John Mayer, I sort of adopted a more melodic appro approach to guitar playing. And the same goes for Matthias Azato, really, lots of melodic influence from him. This next one's from Sean McNally. Been loving the videos, man. What's your camera slash mic set up for the videos? Amazing quality. Thanks very much, Sean. Um, I have two cameras running for most of my videos. So I have a Nikon DSLR. I'll go and grab that now. So I have this Nikon DSLR. It's a D5200. And that is usually capturing my talking face. And I have this Sony RX100 Mark III camera, which is usually positioned around here so you can get a good view of my guitar neck and see what I'm playing. Um, and this microphone is, in fact, what is it? Let me check. Um, yeah, it's an IK Multimedia iRig mic lavalier microphone. So that's just a clip on thing, plugs into my phone and I get the audio from there. And then as far as the audio for my guitar goes, I just go straight into my Axe Effects 2, which acts as a USB interface so I can just plug that into the laptop via USB and get the audio from there into Logic and I edit everything in Final Cut Pro. Can you please teach me how to mute my strings effectively? I see all this really cool funky soul stuff that has people madly strumming their strings but only sounding one note and doing this at lightning speed and I 
can't figure out how to practice pro it properly. That comes from a lot of left and right hand, well, mostly left hand muting. So if I'm playing something like that, I'm basically strumming all strings, but I'm muting with my left hand. So I've got this note on the fifth fret of uh, fifth fret of the D string, and behind it, my finger is sort of muting these three strings behind it, the G, B, and E. And then I have my thumb on the side of the neck to mute the low E string, and I guess I have my third finger resting on the A string to mute that one as well. That's a very, very brief tutorial on string muting for funk stuff, but that's a good question to ask, and I will do a video on that in the future, so thank you for that suggestion. The Blank 231 asks, do you ever get smelly feet? I mean, not really. Like, everyone's feet smell a bit, but I feel like mine are, you know, reasonably okay. Nothing, nothing hideous. Sebastian Vigo asks, what is your dream guitar? Well, I'm lucky enough to own my dream guitar, which is a Sunburst Les Paul Standard. Ever since I saw Slash playing one of these in the Sweet Child of Mine music video, I lusted after one. So I was lucky enough to be able to get one five years ago, as I already mentioned earlier. Stan Lindert asks, teach loopers please, love the channel. Thank you, Stan. I suck at using loopers. I am truly awful at it. It's a lot harder than it looks if you've never tried it before, believe me, um, or maybe I'm just particularly bad at it, but there is one in my Axe Effects, but the loop length is quite short, so I don't even bother using it, to be honest. I would like to get a Ditto looper at some point and sort of practice and actually get good at it. But yeah, ask someone else who's actually good at looping. Sorry, I'm not able to help. Sebastian Hall asks, Hi Ross, question, what's a good way of mixing chords and licks organically like a lot of math rock bands do or Neil Soul, Neil Soul slash gospel players? Love your channel, man. Thanks for your hard work. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Thank you for the question, by the way. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, as I was saying. I would like to know how to do that as well because it's not really in my wheelhouse, it's not something that I do often. I know of a lot of people on Instagram that are very good at that. I would check out Kerry, I think his name's Kerry Too Smooth, Reese Gilchrist, he's another guy on Instagram that's very good at that. Uh, Sam Blakelock, he runs Pickup Jazz on Instagram, he's another very good sort of jazzy neo soul chord slash lick player. Check out those guys, they're very good at it and maybe shoot them a message on Instagram, they'll be able to help you I'm sure. Lorenzo Nicolai asks how to master harmony related to the guitar. Wow, that's a big question. Um, start out with learning diatonic harmony of the major scale and learn a bunch of chord voicings so that you can practice that and apply it to your playing. After that, I would say explore some jazz theory books. You don't have to be a jazz player to do that. I'm not a jazz player at all, but I've got this book called, well, it's called The Jazz Theory Book by Mark Levine, which has a seemingly endless amount of advanced harmonic concepts and techniques for musicians in general. It's not guitar specific at all. This used to be called the Jazz Piano Book, but they've since renamed it to the Jazz Theory Book. So yeah, it's not guitar specific. So yeah, that's my point. Don't be afraid to look at sources that are not specific to the guitar. As long as you know a bunch of, you know, scales and chord shapes, now play them on the guitar, you should be able to apply more general music theory advice from various sources. Raymond asks, why don't you have a Strat? Well, I may or may not be buying a Strat in a couple of weeks time. Just saying I might, might not, who knows? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm buying a Strat in a couple of weeks time. And I did get a question on Facebook from a guy called Art who asked, what are some effective ways to develop speed and coordination between my picking and fretting hands? Well, I sort of answered that in the first question of the video, I think. So refer back to that. Also, do you have a practice template that breaks down the percentage of time to spend on each skill? I also have a video coming out about that in the future. I can't remember if I mentioned that earlier on in this video, but it should be out next week. So thank you for your question, man. Okay, that concludes today's Q&A video. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. Hopefully we can do this again in the future. And if so, please let me know what you thought of this video. Was the Q&A video too long, too short? 
let me know what you'd like to see in the next one and I'll do my best to make the next one even better. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe for more.